to see your faces as you log on here. Always so much more fun when we can see each other and, and connect. At least turn it on, even if you don't leave it on, at least turn it on to say hello as you come on board so we can see everybody who's joining us today. Hello, hello. We want to jump right into today's fun and share who we have on this call, a little bit of housekeeping, and then I'm going to pass it swiftly over to Sarah from Ronald McDonald House, Boston Harbor. Sarah, if you want to wave at everybody again and just let them know who you are. Um, she is their representative who we have had the privilege of doing a session like this with before. She's fantastic. You guys are going to love her. And then we also have Marco, who is coming from Ronald McDonald House, Los Angeles, who's running a little little bit behind, but we'll be here soon. And then I also have Leslie on our staff and Dr. Sharon, if you guys want to wave at everybody, they are uh, the masters at the controls of the PowerPoint and Leslie's going to be monitoring the chat. So if you have questions as we move through all of this, they will work with our partners um, every day and all the time around what their needs are and how we can help support them. And then we have Eliza from our Youth Advisory Council who is on here as well. And if you want to wave and and then we also have Chris, is Kristen still on here? Kristen turned her camera off, but Kristen's our executive director and she's on here as well. So um, don't want to not mention her, even though she's just participating as an observer today. So anyway, as I mentioned, I'm Molly Yuska. I'm the founder of Project Giving Kids, and this is our great team for this afternoon while we are making stress relief kits for families who are visiting the Ronald McDonald House in various locations. And so Sarah's going to go into all of that. Super fast, just a few ground rules. How many of you have been on a give back hour call before? Raise your hand if you've joined us either for one of these or if you came to our Create the Change Week sometime in the fall. Anybody done one of these with us before? All right, awesome. So you know the drill. Please make sure that your name on Zoom matches how you registered, just because we're going to take attendance and see how many, who was here and who wasn't, so we can follow up um, as necessary. Please keep your video on if you're comfortable with that, because we love to see the interaction and see what you guys are doing. Looking at a blank screen with somebody's name is not nearly as fun. Just a reminder, we are recording this session. If you have a question raise your hand, use the raise hand function here in Zoom, or just drop it in the chat. Because as I said, Leslie's going to be watching that intently for any thoughts or comments or questions that you guys have. And then, you know, if there's anything going on that you need help with, certainly ask an adult. Um, and then don't worry if any of this is missed. We are going to send you guys all an email. You will get all the addresses, all the information, everything you could possibly need for follow-up from today. So a lot of information will be shared, but do not worry at all if you miss some of it, okay? Um, Cause we'll make sure you have our addresses and everything that you need. So with that, I just wanna toss it over. I think our next screen is, is my chance to toss it over to Sarah, who's gonna talk. Our theme for today, if you guys have been to our website, if you have watched any of what we do, we try to connect things to different causes. And so our theme for today is comforting the sick. And we've got some videos we're gonna share in a little bit, but we're gonna kick this off by just having Sarah explain to you guys a little bit about Ronald McDonald House and how what you're doing today is going to have an impact. So without further ado, Sarah, it is all yours. Thank you so much, Molly. Um, as Molly mentioned, my name is Sarah Valancourt and I'm the volunteer coordinator in Boston at the Ronald McDonald House in Boston Harbor. So just housekeeping, let me know if you have any trouble hearing me while I'm chatting. But an overview of the Ronald McDonald House charities in general so families have to travel to various places for health, specific health care for their children. Here in Boston, we see families that travel from within our state, neighboring states across the country and across the world for life-saving health care. A lot of the time when families leave uh, home, they're leaving for a long period of time and they're leaving a lot of their belongings, their friends, their families, and a lot of the comforts of home behind. So uh, we have all of you here today to make some kits for our families to make them a bit more at home uh, and allow them to have some time to relieve a little bit of stress, make their days easier and really focus on the important treatment that they're receiving. So stress relief kits that you're making today um, are really helpful for parents and children to have a little time to decompress after stressful days in the hospital or treatment and that will give them all that they need to relax during their stay. Today, you might be making a stress relief kit for a parent or a kid at Boston or in LA at a Ronald McDonald House, 
or you might be making a laundry kit for a family at a, the a McDonald house in Long Beach. Whatever you've decided to do for this hour today, here's the materials list. So you certainly don't need everything that is on this list. And if you don't have everything for your kit today, totally fine. You can go out tomorrow. Maybe you'll be inspired by somebody else's kit that you see. But if you are making a stretch release kit for a parent or a teenager, you could certainly include a journal, essential oils. I have a little bar of soap for mine, some hand lotion, tea, a sleep mask for kids, a coloring book, sticker book, crayons, a children's book, or some examples of calming strategies to help them would be wonderful. And if you're making a laundry kit for the Ronald McDonald House and Lock, they are looking for some dryer sheets and some laundry pods to make uh, it easier for their families to do laundry and have some clean clothing throughout their stay. So you'll need all of those things, um, a box to either drop your materials or your kits off in or uh, mail them off in and uh, you're ready to go. Yeah, so I have everything made out in front of me. And so I'm just going to put in this box that I found. And the first thing I have is colored pencils. So I'll put that in there. And I have some bath bombs. I'm making a kit for teens or adults. I found this on Amazon. It's like a Bolt's Bees kit and it has like hand cream and lip balm. So I thought that was good. And a notebook for journaling and for the colored pencils, we have like an adult coloring book. And of course, because who doesn't love hot chocolate and cheese, I have hot chocolate and cheese. And also a Starbucks gift card. And so I just put everything in this box and that's basically it. Oh, and I also made this for my note. It says, breathing in relaxation, breathing out tension because I thought this was a really cute quote. Eliza, that is amazing. I have to say, I'm so impressed by the thought that you put into every single one of those items that is in there. So we didn't, if you guys missed the intro, Eliza is part of our Youth Advisory Council, and we're going to have her talk in a little bit about the Youth Advisory Council and what that looks like and who's involved and how to get involved. But what a fantastic job you did in picking things. Thank you so much. And I love your card, by the way. Thank you. Eliza had a great idea in making a card so that our families can know who sent their kit and who's thinking of them. So if you'd like to add a card to your finished kit, whether you're doing a laundry kit or a stress release kit, please do so. I just ask that you refrain from saying anything like get well soon or anything like that. More say, let them know about you, say who's giving them the kit um, and that maybe something you like to do to relax. So that they know, you know, how to use the items that you're giving them. And so I would love to see, you know, we saw Eliza's kit, um, but I'd be interested to see if everyone else has for their kit. I'm, my name is Sophia, and we got some things to make a kit for a teenager slash parent, or really a kit as well could use this Maybe kit. Maybe two kit, kits. Yeah, yeah. two yeah. kits. Uh, uh, Kind of the same things as Elijah, like coloring books and um, pencils and uh, notebooks and stuff like that. But we also got some bath bombs and essential oils and some things to decorate the bags as well. Awesome. Hi, Sophia. Hi, um, Sarah. Hi, good to see you. <laughs> I think too, uh, decorating is really important. You know, you can use a, a shoebox or a bag or whatever you have at home, but super fun to decorate whatever you have um, and give it a little bit unique of a unique flair for the person receiving it. Does anybody else want to share what they're putting in their kit? We are making two kits for kids and two kits for teenagers. In the kits for kids, we have coloring books, crayons, stickers, lots of crafty things. And for teenagers, we have mini journals, some bling stickers, some colored pencils, an easy crochet kit that makes a donut, and some cream. 
And then we have white bags and we're just going to decorate the outside of the bags. That's wonderful. Awesome. Hey, Sarah, I mean, yeah, Sarah, we had a question. Can they include candy in their bags? No, yes. Or anything edible? Yeah. You can include uh, something edible as long as it's bought from the store and not made at home. So I guess, you know, it looks like everyone has what they Sarah, need. Sarah, we have one more group that wants oh. to show this family right here. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. We're making ones for kids, and what we have in here is a sticker book, coloring sheets, markers, these. What is that? Say what it is. Coloring book. An uh, uh, activity book. We got more coloring things. This also has more stickers. <laughs> a Hot Wheels car. Play it up. Isn't it hard not wow. to keep it for yourself and play with it? That's so great. You guys are very generous. Are you three brothers? My little brother is going crazy about the Hollywood stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that, so that sounds about right. That sounds about right. Well, I know Sarah would love to share more with all of you about Ronald McDonald House and their work. And we want you guys to keep working on those cards and on those packages. Do we want to share this quick video so you guys can get a better sense of exactly what they do at Ronald McDonald House, Boston Harbor? Here we go. This is where we dropped our bags after a full day of traveling. This is the bed where Joseph slept for 12 hours after his first day of treatment. This is the window where my husband and I wondered, will this really work? This is the kitchen where I found the courage to bake Joseph his favorite dessert. This is the couch where he actually laughed for the first time in weeks. This is more than just an apartment. This is the place where my family was healed. Where my family was healed. Where my family was healed. Hundreds of families like mine come to Boston each year for life-saving treatment. Join me to help give them a home while they're here. So that gives you all a little bit of a look at our community space and our apartment. So we have 10 apartments for our families to come stay uh, with us while their family member is seeking medical treatment in the Boston area. So at the Ronald McDonald House Boston Harbor, biggest mission um, is to just remove the stress of daily life and make sure that families that are in the Boston area for health care for their children uh, really just have a chance to focus on health and healing and their family. Um, our apartments have, uh, are fully equipped with everything that a family would need to be comfortable and safe to not really have to worry about anything more than getting uh, the medical the care that they need. We're very close to our local hospitals and we really may know that it's important that families are able to stay together bring their support structure with them when they're traveling away from home. And that is why we think it's so, so important to make sure that their, their stays with us are as easy as possible. A couple of these photos on this slide are of families that have stayed with us in the past. As I mentioned, the Ronald McDonald House in Boston is made up of 11 apartments, 10 of which are for families to stay, and uh, one that serves as our community space and our offices. So that is where staff, volunteers, families uh, come together for meals and activities. Obviously, right now, we're not doing that just to keep everybody safe during COVID. But these, uh, this is a photo here on the bottom of our building. Our community space is one of those top right-hand apartments. And that is a photo of the inside of our community space in our community kitchen with some wonderful TGK art kit donations that we got from Create the Change Week. So who stays in Boston uh, at the Ronald McDonald House? Pediatric patients. So that's anyone from a newborn baby to a 21-year-old traveling from more than 40 miles outside of Boston. So like I said before, we have families from Massachusetts that come stay with us from states across the country and across the globe. And then we have families that stay with us from anywhere from three nights to 90 days. So Sometimes you really get to know a family very well. They're with us for a long time. 
And then we serve patients that are uh, being treated at any Boston area hospital, whether they're staying in the hospital, their family can stay with us, or sometimes the patient's uh, going in for treatment during the day and stays with us when they're not uh, getting treatment. That is where any stress relief kits that you're making for us might end up. Later, we'll ask you where you, you all are from. Some of you might be making some kits for our friends on the West Coast that are at RMHs in Los Angeles. So has Marco joined? Or mm -hmm. Oh, good. So Marco is on. I'm going to pass it along to him, and he's going to tell you all a little bit about the Ronald McDonald House of Los Angeles and uh, how the kits you're making can help families there. So yeah, my, my name is Marco, and I work here at the Los Angeles Ronald McDonald House. Um, we're on the other side of the country from Boston. Um, basically here at the Ronald McDonald House, we actually have a total of 75 rooms. They're not necessarily uh, apartments per se. They are more like small hotel rooms. We do have a total of 75. So, um, and each room usually is, is big enough to host a family of about four or five. So uh, when we are at full capacity, we, we can have up to 200 people here all living together, uh, sharing the kitchen, sharing the laundry room, sharing our gym. Uh, so it's, it's a very active house. Uh, lately, of course, things have changed a little bit because of the pandemic, but we still uh, keep going strong. We work with uh, local uh, hospitals here. Uh, the biggest hospital that we work with is the uh, Children's Hospital of Los Angeles, uh, CHLA, which is literally across the street from us. So the families just walk back and forth Sometimes the child will be in the hospital as an inpatient, and sometimes the child will be here at the house as an outpatient, which means they go <coughs> to the hospital for treatment and whatnot. So the, um, any, uh, anything that comes to our families in the form of donation is, is really, really appreciated. And especially the little laundry bags with, with, the, with the laundry pods and, and the dryer sheets, it's amazing how many families really are so grateful for everything that we provide. But so many of them always mention how great it is to be able to do laundry. Uh, if they've been at the hospital waiting for a room, maybe sometimes for two to three days, uh, staying at the hospital and for them to finally be able to come over and, and use the facility and do laundry, take a shower, things like that. It is so important for the whole family to just feel a, a sense of peace and normality by, you know, doing laundry, uh, cooking some soup and taking a shower, things that we always take for granted. So they're always, always happy to be able to do that. So yeah, if you send those things out to us, just know that you are immediately part of that success because families are constantly walking up to our front desk, uh, you know, inquiring about things they can either have for their kids. And my, hey, my child is really bored right now. And I'm on the phone with the insurance company, do you have a coloring book so we can hand them one of these? Or I really need to do laundry. I don't have money to go get soap and things like that. So all of that is so much appreciated. So yeah, that's uh, what we do here in Los Angeles. Any questions about that? I don't see any questions in the chat, but Marco, I'd love for you to speak to how LA is a little different, if you will, from Boston and share and then to kind of tee up, that'll tee up the next video. Absolutely. So um, if you... Um, I think everybody can agree that Los Angeles is sometimes synonymous with Hollywood and, you know, the, those types of things out here on the West Coast. Uh, so sometimes we are blessed that we do get to meet some of our local uh, businessmen and industry people that work in Hollywood and movies, actors. We've been blessed by uh, sometimes we have uh, uh, famous people stop by and share time with our kids. Some of the uh, actors from the Avengers have actually stopped by and uh, shared stories with the kids. And it's always, always very exciting to see that. Just before the pandemic, we had a group of uh, uh, volunteers who actually work in the industry. And they, uh, what they do is they do special effects for movies, specifically for superhero movies. So they offered to make a video for us that would feature some of our kids' uh, superheroes. Uh, and it would also highlight a little bit of our house, but just a sense of, of, of uh, excitement around the house with this video, uh, because some of our kids were able to participate. They got a chance to be behind a, a professional camera 
and get professional instructions from a from a real movie director, if you will. And and then the, the team took the footage back to their uh, to whatever it is that they do the magic and created this really really awesome video. We always love to share it because it it, it uh, highlights our kids, the families that stay here at the house, and you know they they live here. This is their home, and for them to be able to be part of this and share it with everybody. And now we're going to share it with you. So um, everybody that all the kids that you're going to see in this video are some of them actually are still here at the house. Some of them have uh, have uh, you know uh, gone back home or to another hospital or whatnot. You'll see a couple of our staff members, but all of the kids you see here are actual residents here at the house. So this video was filmed on location here at Los Angeles Ronald McDonald House. Get ahead. <laughs> it's pronounced to toe it. Oh, yeah. Sure it is, potato head. Sure it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see who's laughing in a minute. Well, the tables are turned. <laughs> oh, well, no, I I don't think we could have searched the whole country and found any other Ronald McDonald house that had a video like that to share. Only in Los Angeles does that happen. But Marco, I'd like you just to confirm that none of your patients have ever actually turned into potatoes. It never happened. <laughs> As of right now, no, no, no. Okay. <laughs> But we figured if you guys weren't awake yet, that that video would certainly catch your attention because it certainly did ours when we were talking about what we could share with you today. But anything else, Marco, that you just want to highlight about Ronald McDonald House LA specifically? If not, we're going to, Claudia is on. Sharon told me she has joined us and we have one more Ronald McDonald House uh, in Long Beach. And so before we pass it, Marco, anything else you want to highlight for everybody just unique to your particular location? Uh, yeah, I, I would also like to mention that, uh, and I'm not sure how if, if it's the same or, or, or not in Boston, but we are also sort of a hub for international families because the hospital across the street, CHLA, actually houses some of, some world-renowned doctors who perform some, some true miracles in their surgeries and procedures. And so we get families from all over the world to come out here and stay for, for treatment, uh, we, we've had families from, uh, 
from Latin America, from South America, from, from, from Europe, from, from China, from uh, the Middle East, from Russia, everywhere. And it's great to see that mix of families here uh, Los An at the house. It's like a small cross section of the city that we have here at the house. That's, that's amazing. I think that's the thing, you know, I think I, I won't answer for Sarah, but having lived in Boston for years, I think it's similar, right? You have such amazing medical facilities in Boston as well, and people who come from all over the place to be able to access those services that are in a very limited number of places, you know, around the world. So, um, Cla Claudia, are you are you ready to, to talk a little bit about your location in Long Beach? Thank you. And thank you for having me. And thank you to all that are out there working on our behalf. The Long Beach Ronald McDonald House is similar to LA in many ways and that our goal is to bring comfort, care and support to families. And the families, majority of the families that stay here with us in Long Beach are moms and dads who have had a, a newborn that was born with a concern or born early. And so baby is in house in the hospital across the street and mom and dad or parents are staying with us here at the house. And they're part of the baby's care team. They come back to the house for meals, to take naps, to sleep at night, to shower, to just rest and recover so they can get back in the game and continue helping their child get better. We do have other medical partners uh, that bring us. So we don't have too, too many kids in our house, believe it or not. We have other medical partners that bring us some youngsters, but majority, 80% of the people we serve are, pa are parents. So this little video I'm sharing isn't specific to the Long Beach House. Long Beach Ronald McDonald House is part of a chapter of six houses in Southern California. And this little video is little snippets from all six of those houses. And I think at the end, it'll show you um, the different houses that we have. So this gives you an idea of who you're helping and why. I'll never forget the look on my wife's face when the doctor gave us the news. Although he tried to break it to us gently, as soon as he said the word cancer, we knew our lives would never be the same. If it was me that was sick, that I could handle. But not one of my babies. Over the next few months, our battle for life took us far from home and into a confusing world of surgery, radiation, and chemotherapy. Sleepless nights at the hospital were followed by weeks of living apart. While the hospital was doing a great job caring for our daughter, we were struggling to keep our little family together. With money running out and our marriage being tested and our other daughter suffering from the strain, we were barely hanging on. While you might know it as the Ronald McDonald House, for us it will always be our own personal miracle. And we're not the only ones who've experienced this magical place. From the moment we walked through the front doors, we knew this was special. While it was great to have a place so close to the hospital where a whole family could stay together, we soon realized this was so much more than a house. The staff and volunteers were unbelievable. They made us feel like we were the most important guests that had ever stayed there. It wasn't until later that we found out they make all the guests feel that way. Having our own private room to retreat to when things got rough was something we really appreciated. And when we didn't feel like being alone, the chance to share a meal with other families who were going through the exact same thing as us was so powerful. In fact, that turned out to be one of the most important parts of our stay, sharing our pain with other people who truly understood. Some of those people will be friends of ours for the rest of our lives. And coming back from a long day at the hospital, it was great to walk into the house and be treated to a meal prepared by these amazing volunteers. At the house, they call them meals of love or happy meals. To us, they were part of the miracle. The fact that there were people who cared this much for us was huge. It really was. It meant much more than just a meal. One of our favorite things about the house was the laundry room. While this may sound a little strange, doing laundry together was one of the most normal things we had done in months. And to have internet access and computers and a place for the kids to play and transportation and, and outdoor space to have a barbecue and so much more. And then there were those things that no one would have ever expected. the day that the local hair 
salon came to the house and cut and styled my wife's hair. It had been so long since she had taken any time for herself and the difference it made for her is hard to describe. I had that same feeling when Lisa delivered a gift basket to our room that included a bathrobe and slippers and, and some other things that made my wife feel special. It was so unexpected, yet so wonderful. And as if that wasn't enough, I need to tell you about Camp Ronald McDonald for good times. When our doctor first suggested that our daughter go to camp, we could not even imagine it. How could a child who was weak from chemo and radiation go to camp? But when we found out that there were medical facilities and volunteer doctors and nurses, and that cancer patients had been attending this camp for 30 years, we thought we'd give it a try. chance to do something that she had only heard about from her friends. She got to go to camp. Swimming, archery, hiking, horseback riding, and, and even a 50-foot climbing wall were all part of the magical week that she will never forget. It was on our way home from camp that we realized that the Ronald McDonald House Charities is so much more than a house. Our six houses in Los Angeles, Orange County, Loma Linda, Pasadena, Bakersfield, and Long Beach truly are magical places. When you also consider our family rooms located inside local hospitals, our camp for children and families battling cancer, our college scholarship program for deserving high school seniors, and the $500,000 in annual grants we give to other charities serving children. I hope you would agree that we are much, much more than a house. Okay, so two things I want to add. One is that's an old video and our CEO is now Vince Bryson. Second thing I'll tell you is although that movie revolves around a family that had was dealing with a cancer diagnosis, that is not a requirement to stay at a Ronald McDonald house. Any critically ill child and their families are welcome. Claudia, I have a question for you. A lot of people are wondering the specific story around the laundry care kits and the need for the laundry care kits. Can yes. you, can you know, when you talk to me about that, can you explain the need for laundry care kits and the individual kits for everybody? Yeah, so we obviously have laundry facilities available to our families. Uh, we have two laundry rooms. And we used to put all the soap into a basket and let families take what they needed and do their laundry. But with COVID, sharing, touching, sharing things like that is not a, no longer a best practice. So we put laundry pods in an individual baggie and we give the family what they need when they're ready to do laundry. We don't have it sitting out. So laundry soap and a dryer sheet just helps simplify the laundry process, parents don't have to go out and purchase laundry soap and we can provide it for them in a safe manner. So many new roles with COVID. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And I think, you know, complicating everything, right? And I think also making, you know, these times even more trying for people who find themselves in this situation. And I think one of the things that struck me about the video was just how much those <laughs> little things really mean to the clients and to the families that you all are serving, you know, and I think, you know, that helps for me anyway, when, when we sit down to make these or finish these later to think about the person who's receiving that and what, what that might do for their day or for that moment. And, and Marco and Sarah and Claudia, you guys get to see that all the time through your work, but if anybody has a special story that they want to, you know, illuminate or anything that they want to share in that regard, I think sometimes it's helpful to think about the person receiving that and how your little bit in that stress relief kit or the laundry care kit might really be the thing that that day helped get that family through to the next one. Anybody have anything they want to share in that, in that vein? Any story that I can out? share a little story with you about, you never know what you can do, what your one kind word or your, your gesture can do to change a day. Um, I'll just share a quick story. It was at Christmas time. We had a family here for a long time, almost a year. And mom was in the kitchen. It was late. I was on my way out and she was upset. I could tell she was upset and I could decide if I wanted to interrupt and chat with her or if I wanted to just leave it and head home. But I decided to stop. And anyway, 
we started to talk and I asked her, my first question is usually, have you had anything to eat? And she said, no. So I warmed her a plate and we sat down and she was kind of unpacking her day. And it was a very rough one, but what I might cry saying this one because it struck me like, Oh, I wish I could have written this down. She, the, her words to me when she, as we, she started to eat and feel a little bit better. She said, I don't know who provided this meal, but I can't thank them enough because coming home to this food that was prepared for me, I ate dinner and eating has made me feel better. But had this meal not been made, I wouldn't have eaten. I would have just gone to bed. And she was truly, truly grateful for the hands that prepared that meal. And as much as people think, oh, yeah, I'm going to. Anyway, it's not that hard to heat something up or just a small thing like a meal or the ability to do your laundry without having to jump through too many hoops or be a hassle. Um, anything we can do to make our families' lives easier because they are in a fight of their lives most of the time. And I will also tell you this, what I hear from families all the time is they just felt like there was love in the house from volunteers to staff to other families. It just becomes kind of a overarching feeling in the house and little things, little acts, love is a verb and little actions, little things that you provide uh, show the love that we want to give to our families. Thank you for sharing that. That was very touching and I think so true. And I hope all of you who are working right now on something that will be given to one of these families by Sarah or Claudia or Marco or a member of their staff. I mean, I hope that you recognize the power that lies in your hands to touch someone else's life in the middle of a really, really hard moment. And I would love for us to take a moment and just Take our, take, turn our videos on and share where you are, what you have. We want to get a group picture. We want to see your goodness um, so that we can capture this moment and remember all of you who are doing so much to help someone that you will probably never know or cross paths with, but are doing it because it is a good and kind and wonderful thing to do. So do you guys have something? If it's your card, hold it up. If it's a bag, hold it up. If it's a, a Tide Pod, hold it up. Whatever you have there. Um, a, we'd love yeah. to, we'd love to take it off and, and get a group, a group picture. These are great. Nice job guys. I got a lot of everybody. Awesome. Couple, couple things, you guys, we want to just take a minute while you're still finishing your work, please drop in your chat. One of the things that we're trying to do in these sessions is, is get an idea of how much goodness you guys are generating and helping put out there into the world. So before you leave today, please drop in the chat, even if you're not finished, even if you're going to finish, you know, next week, even, or whatever, I know it's going to take us. It always takes us a few days at my house to get these things wrapped up. How many of each item, or if you're making one particular kind of kit that you have made so that we can track that impact and share that um, with people who are part of the PGK community because it is really, really helpful. We also have a really quick survey that we would love for you guys to, um, to do where you can also input that. We also want to just mention, th this is again, all coming in an email. So please do not worry if you don't jot this down. There are locations here, three locations with the people on the call today, their addresses are listed here. You can mail your donation. I know there are drop-off options. All of that will be um, in the email that we send and follow up. So it, it is kind of funny with COVID right now, different places have different times when you can do it, what have you. There is a slip that we also will share, and I don't know if we can drop that in the chat um, as well, but we'd love for you to print out a little donation slip that lets them know that these kits were made in conjunction with PGK and the Give Back Hour. It's always helpful for, for, the, for the organizations to know where these things come from. Sometimes things pop in, you know, and they have no idea where, where it came from. So let them know um, that this was by way of PGK and your work with us here today. And if you are a teen who is looking for a community service hour um, for this, please be sure that you email us and let us know what you made if you have not already done the survey. Um, we want to know what you actually have done. I know uh, people are are not always on screen. And so, you know, just let us know. Let us know where you are and what you did. And we are happy to sign off on your service hour um, with whatever paperwork your school uh, or Mo program requires. Molly, sorry to interrupt, but um, Eliza had printed out what the actual slip looks like. So if we could do a spotlight oh, yeah. on Eliza, that would be great. And I know Eliza also wants to, at some point, as you mentioned, talk about, yeah. okay, here we go, Eliza. 
There we go. So that's um, uh, what the slip looks like. And it gives uh, our nonprofits a heads up where their kits came from. And it just really helps with the whole process. So thank you, Eliza, for doing that. Yeah. And while, while we're on that, why don't we take, why don't we take a moment right now and just have Eliza talk about the Youth Advisory Council. We have a good number of um, teens who are on this call today. Some of you might be interested in knowing more about this. So Eliza, do you want to talk just quickly about the Youth Advisory Council, what you guys do and, and how wonderful, you know, the, the group of teens are that we have? Yeah, sure. Um, so the Youth Advisory Council um, consists of about 20 teens from across the country and they give feedback and make a voice to the PGK staff. And it's always really fun. And it's so nice to work with like kids your age. And there are four committees. The, there is a tech committee, which reviews like the app and the website and comes up with remote programs. And then there's a program committee that participates in virtual volunteer sessions, like the Give Back Hour. And there's a marketing, marketing committee, which I'm in, and it works with social media and social media content and campaigns. And I'm also part of the community service and team bargain committee that comes up with fun activities for our teams to do. And you can always sit in in, uh, you can always sit in on one of our meetings to feel for the group before committing to joining. Well, welcome to new members. So, yeah. Awesome. Thank you. And I just want to note, Leslie is our staff person who leads um, the Youth Advisory Council. So if anybody is interested in connecting with her and learning more about that, we would love for you to reach out to her or just even message her in the chat before you go today and she can follow up with you. Sarah, do you want to mention just quickly, we'll go through all three of these, the specifics around drop off or donation to Boston Harbor, and then we'll let Marco and Claudia speak as well, just about any any particulars with regards to drop offs in um, LA and Long Beach. Yeah, so for anyone who might be making a stress relief kit for a, a parent, teen or kid um, and wants to donate either in person or via, uh, via mail to the Ronald McDonald House in Boston Harbor, you can, uh, if you're in the Boston area, we can accept donations at our location in Charlestown from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., seven days a week. I just ask that, you know, if you're planning to come by, shoot an email to volunteerboston at rmhcne.org or give a call to our office just so the staff person knows to expect you. Um, and due to COVID, we can do a contact list uh, drop off in our lobby. And then for anyone mailing, we are mailing addresses on the, the prior uh, slide along with everyone else's. Um, and so just drop your, your slip in there and, and send it our way. And then Marco, do you want to talk about LA? Yeah. So if you're in the area and you're dropping off your items here, just know that there's actually two buildings at our house. So, and there's actually two addresses for our house. So if you're going to Google it, it might look confusing because it might give you different locations. But the buildings are right next to each other, they, but they have different addresses, different street names, but they're right next to each other. So you can drop off at either one. Uh, it's all one house. And when you drop off, there's a, there's a visitor lot in front of both buildings and there's a door with a buzzer. You just press the buzzer and somebody's going to come out to greet you. Normally we would have you come in and, and see the house and, and maybe take some pictures with you and whatnot. But again, uh, right now that's not possible. So we'll actually come outside with a little card and, and collect your items. We can take pictures of you outside and things like that, but you won't be able to come in. If you are mailing, you can mail them. Uh, the address should be in there. If not, I can provide that, but you can always address that to me and it comes directly to me and I'll get it out to the front desk as soon as possible. Yeah, so we had it on a prior slide and it will be in that follow-up email, the, the address. We had a question earlier, Marco, for you. If somebody is interested in getting involved as a volunteer in the LA chapter, I think that was where it was specifically coming from. Should they um, email you? I mean, it, it, are you the point person for potential mm -hmm. volunteers? Yes, so yes, they can definitely email me. Right now, we actually don't have a uh, bonafide volunteer coordinator, but I, as operations manager, I am taking care of all that right now. So yes. Okay, 
Great. So for, yes. for the person, I can't remember who asked that question, um, an email and you will have again, all of that in our follow-up email, um, just an email to Marco to get that process yeah, started sure of, of gathering more information. And Claudia, how about you in terms of uh, the laundry care kits in any specifics <laughs> there in Long Beach? Well, we are also open 24 seven, but we prefer to have donations between nine and five. And we also have a doorbell at the front door. There's parking in front of the house, a loading zone. You can ring for entry or ring to have someone come out and meet you and they'll collect your donation. And we would like to take a photo as well when you come. But if that, if nine to five doesn't work for you, you can always call us at the number that's listed and we would be happy to set up a time that's convenient. Awesome. And I know Sharon, we have, um, a we have one other slide that has everybody's email address. Again, you don't necessarily need to, um, to write this down right now, but if anybody is interested, oh yeah, sorry, I'm skipping the important PGK stuff. Um, let me let me go back. Let me go back. If you guys are are excited about this kind of an opportunity, we have tons and tons and tons of ways on our website. Before you do that, please take a picture in our virtual photo booth. If we can drop that link in the chat as well, we have a virtual photo booth for Give Back Hour. We would love for you guys to take a picture with your kit or your card or your whatever before the end of the day and just share that with us. I think we're always looking uh, to capture these moments as we said at the outset. If you aren't already following Project Giving Kids, please follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We share a lot of information and a lot of inspiration um, on our social media channels. And if you really love Ronald McDonald House, please be sure that you um, have the handles for the partners that have been on here today. If you are in a location outside of that, there are Ronald McDonald houses in many, many cities across the U.S. And there was a link on a prior slide that for those of you that aren't in Boston or in Long Beach or in L.A. and might be interested in seeing if there is a Ronald McDonald house closer to you where you could donate, we will share that link as well. Um, but we'd love to see you guys back on another Give Back Hour. We'd love for you to share this opportunity with friends, teachers, families, families. And on our website and our mobile app, which are two big pieces of what we do, there are literally hundreds of other ways that you can get involved in supporting Ronald McDonald House charities and supporting so many other organizations. So we encourage you to go to projectgivingkids.org forward slash activities. It will open up that treasure trove of other ways you can get involved. Um, we also mentioned at the outset the Give Back app. We encourage you to download that. You can track your service hours in there. You can do all kinds of things um, to help you remember these moments where you have stopped and paused and helped others and come back and, and reflect on that. We mentioned Leslie, if you are interested in learning more about the Youth Advisory Council. So we just encourage you guys to, to stay engaged with us. We'd love to have you back. We're going to be doing these give back hours every month, uh, twice a month. We've got a couple of, of great ones. Our theme for March is Aid the Elderly. Um, and we've got a couple of great projects coming up that we'd love to see you on as well. But I know we're getting to the end of our hour together. I just want to pause. We didn't get to our reflection questions. So I challenge all of you to leave this hour and think for a moment about what is what is helpful to you when you are feeling stressed out? How do you de-stress and how can you, um, you know, encourage through the use of these stress relief kits to help these families going through such challenging times? to do the same because I think it's a really important piece for all of us. But um, any final questions, parting thoughts, last kits you wanna share or cards you wanna share? This hour went really fast. I feel like, how is it already you know, 6.30 on the East Coast? But we do need to let you all go and get to dinner and to your afternoons. But any parting thoughts? We'll leave you with these parting thoughts about PGK and, and email addresses for follow-up. But anybody have any last things they want to share, raise your hand, drop it in the chat, something. Now, did everybody have fun? Did you learn something about Ronald McDonald House today? Abby Yuska, do you want to share something? We've got the spotlight on you. Uh -huh. So this is one of the bags we made. This is a bag for kids. And it has like a little kid's book, some crayons and a little sticker book and a coloring book. And we colored on the outside of it, that little design. You can see that very well. But yeah, that's what we did. And we, and in the background, you can see some of that. And then those little Ziploc baggies, um, those are the laundry kits. We have a few of them over there. They're just hard to see. Charlotte. Oh, yeah. Could I uh, share like the baskets that I made? Absolutely. We'd love to see them. 
Oh, okay. So I made one for uh, like older kids and adults and one for kids. In the kids one, I have um, colored paper, coloring books, some dice games, a sticker pack, color pencils, some chapstick, a Rubik's cube, two like fun like bath bombs, hot chocolate with marshmallows in it, a small little uh, etchy sketch thingy, and um, I gave it a note. And in this one, I have um, a sketch pad for and uh, some bath salts, yeah. and a journal, hot chocolate tea. Uh, bath bombs, essential oils, an essential oil diffuser, chapstick, and some face masks. Wow, those are amazing. Any Anybody who gets that is going to definitely have their day made, I think, Charlotte. <laughs> Thank you. That's fantastic. Did we have somebody else that wanted to, to share? All right. If not, we have a we have a couple last things. If you do, raise your hand. Um, we put the link in the chat. Oh, we do have another share. Oh, Ethan and Bryce. All right, let's see it. Can you guys unmute? Can we hear you? It says, make your day perfect because it's a cat. It's a cat, yeah. yeah. And then I wrote my name down here in grade. And it's and I, I wrote, have a great day in like a bunch of different colors. And then wrote my name in grade as well. So cool. Do you guys want to show us what's in there? Are you, you have some serious artistic talent. I'm a little envious. I'm actually still putting it in. So <laughs> are you putting it in? Uh, since we discovered you can put edibles, there's lots of chocolate going in. Oh, yum. Nice work, guys. Which, which lucky location is going to get those bags? Because I have to say those are looking pretty fantastic. Austin. So we'll, we'll drop them off. All right. Fantastic. Sarah's excited, I'm sure. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. We had, um, so we did have our link that we dropped in there. If you could please click on that and let us know um, how you felt about today, any feedback around the session. We are always looking to make these hours even better. So we want to hear from you. It is not long, I promise. It's like an extra couple of minutes and it makes a world of difference for us. So we would love for you to do that. And I think we had one other question, Leslie, in the chat about service hours. Basically, if anyone does have service hours, they can email info at projectgivingkids.org and we will sign off on those. We do take attendance, so just want to make sure you guys know uh, that we will definitely sign off on those and appreciate it. Yeah, and let us know what you made too when you're in there too. So we want you participating in these sessions um, as, as a part of, of that service hour. So even if it's just one, it doesn't matter. We just wanna know that you guys were actively participating um, in this time. But I have to say, thank you so much to Claudia and Marco and Sarah for being with us today. And just for the amazing work that you do to lift these families up in a very, very difficult chapter of their lives. It is inspiring for all of us at PGK to partner with organizations like yours. So so thank you for giving us the opportunity to showcase what you do today and for sharing that with all the people that participated. And thank you to all of you who joined us today. You guys, we wouldn't have we wouldn't have these if it weren't for all of you. And I am inspired by all of the young people who are making this world a better place and touching the lives of others and especially those that they don't know. So thank you so much for being a part of it. I hope everybody has an awesome rest of the day. Thank you to, to our team at PGK, Leslie and Sharon, um, and everybody who does all the, all the legwork to bring these um, hours to life. So thanks everybody. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Email us if you have questions and we will be emailing you tomorrow with all of the follow-up so you know what to do next. But don't ever hesitate to reach out if there's more um, that we can answer or do to help. So thanks everybody. Have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you so much. Thank you so thanks much. Thanks for joining. Thank Shout out to Ronald McDonald Houses. Thanks so much for partnering with us.